Hello, my name is Nari Creed and I manage communications for Soils for Life. Our videos feature some of our wonderful regenerative farmers and the scientists and experts who support them. They have great stories to tell. What else have you been foraging for? Anything different from the field mushrooms? Saffies. Saffies. Yes. What are Saffies? Alison Puglio is one of those experts. She's a natural historian, environmental photographer, honorary fellow at the ANU, and today the font of all knowledge on the subject of fungi. Her workshop at Tombara near Braidwood in southern New South Wales posed some really tricky challenges for a fascinated group of farmers. This one here, that looks like a truffle, doesn't it? What is that one? What is that one? Is that off an acacia? Oh, sorry. They have a smell. What does it smell yeah. like? Um, can you smell it? Can't smell it. It's spongy. So, soft. if you can't smell it, look for the nearest woman. Women have much better sense of smell. Burnt carpet. Burnt carpet? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the definitive test of chest if it's a, if it's a truffle? I thought this was a truffle. It looks just like it. The definitive test, <laughs> bounce it. That's oh, another ball. <laughs> Potentially have some of the great, probably the greatest or among the greatest number of fungus species anywhere in the world. And if you think of how vast this continent is, how undeveloped it is, but also all that great range of different habitats we have, from our tropical ecosystems to our alpine regions to our vast areas of desert, all these different areas support different kinds of fungi that have different microhabitats, different microclimates, different plant species. But I do think thinking is changing. I think for a long time. The way we taught agriculture, horticulture, gardening, biology, we didn't actually look at the positive beneficial roles that fungi play. And I'm so excited now to work with farmers, progressive farmers, horticulturalists, all sorts of people who recognise that this is actually the beginning, the soil, the soil structure. The secret work of fungi is the most valuable to farmers. Beneath the visible reproductive part of the fungus, the mushroom, is the mycelium. This forms mutually beneficial connections with the roots of plants, increasing the surface area of the plant's roots and maximising access to nutrients and water. It's beneficial to both the fungi and the plants, and the value to farmers seeking to enrich their soil is immense. In a field next to the workshop, there was a new world of discovery. The root system could extend two or three times further out, and then the mycelium is extending mm. it out again. And this is a fantastic way to actually see the colour variation, the differences in form and shape. Look at the mushrooms, Swiss brown, baby bella, snowy white, portobello, they're all one species. Cordigaricus yeah. bosporus, they're just different marketing names. Yeah. Yeah. But all of those, all your shiitake, pleurotus, the oyster mushrooms, they're all saprobes, they're all saprophytic fungi. Mm. So they're all the recycling types. So basically all they need to do is to get to learn what are the set of conditions that they like, what's the nutrition yep. source, what's the pH, what's the temperature. There was of course a lot of discussion about fungi you can eat and live and fungi you can eat and die. But Alison's explanation of the agricultural benefits of all of them was enlightening. Although their value seems to be intrinsically understood by farmers attuned to their soils. I think farmers do know about fungi, perhaps not the extent to what they're doing. I think they recognise that when the soil is only dirt made up of its mineral components rather than the biology, that it costs them an awful lot to then put fertilisers and, and supplements and to have to irrigate. But I, I think many are aware of it and it's about changing old practices and being able to speak out against the pressures of continually putting those supplements and chemicals and irrigation on the soil. So I think that's a big difficult part of the equation. But I also think oftentimes if we create the right conditions for fungi to flourish and we reduce those pressures so we don't break up that mycelium, that fungal network in the soil, if we don't drown it by over irrigating, we don't physically disturb it through tilling and ploughing, if we don't put too much phosphorus on there for example because too much phosphorus stops the it inhibits the actual formation of those arbuscular mycorrhizae or fungi. If we both create the habitats, get that biology back into the soil and we reduce the pressures, the fungi will come. 